Right now at 6, getting creative. Despite fundraising still being difficult due to COVID-19, state line charities are thinking outside the box to continue helping people in need. Plus, grain bin safety, an inside look at brand new equipment fire crews are using to keep people safe. We'll show you how it works. Plus, Hidden Gym, we show you the perfect spot for a scenic walk in the park just in time for fall. Good evening and welcome to 13 News at 6. I'm Brittany Hardaway. Many things look closer to normal than they did this time last year, but one group still trying to recover from COVID-19 are charities. 13 News reporter William Ingalls caught up with two local nonprofits about the fundraising struggles they're facing and their creative approach to still help people in need. Goals are commonplace at charities like the United Way, but with COVID limiting in-person interactions, leaders say it's still hard to fundraise. You know, the pandemic has affected our giving. Um, it's, it's still something that companies and, and individual donors feel strongly about, giving what they can. So maybe it's not as much, but they're still going to give. That struggle extends to other charities like Rock House Kids, who have also seen the majority of their events canceled over the last 18 months, slowing down their planned expansion. We are doing pretty good, but um, you have to look at things differently on how to reach people because there's a lot of people that still don't want to meet in person. While dealing with financial hardships, both charities are getting creative to make ends meet. For the United Way, that started with putting on its own fundraising event. That was the first time in a long time we had done uh, a fundraising event of our own, and we'd like to do that again in the summer. So it's, it's really changed the way we're looking at reaching to find new donors. Over at Rock House Kids, the organization is taking to social media to gain support, and instead of relying as much on fundraising, they're searching for grants. We are looking all over the place for grants to make sure that we're still able to provide everything that is needed here, from the electricity to the food for the kids. Changing trends and getting creative to help people in the state line. For your 13 Weather Authority, William Ingalls, 13 News. And if you want to help either of those charities, we have that information on our website, WREX.com. Next to the weather. It was a soggy afternoon in the state line. You're looking, well, we were going to show you a gloomy out outside downtown. We know it's been super cloudy out there, Alex, but hopefully we have a little bit of sunshine on the way. Uh, so we'll have that likely by this time tomorrow night. Uh, okay. We have to wait for a few more clouds and showers to come on through, but it's not pouring like it was earlier today. Mm -hmm. All the downpours are out of the picture as of this point, and even the spotty light showers that came through very early this evening, they are gone as well. So if you do have to venture out this evening, you are looking at dry conditions on radar. We'll continue to have uh, the dry weather across uh, much of the state line uh, during the early portions of the evening. Now, while it's hard to tell currently, there is a cold front on the way, which does bring a chance for some scattered showers and storms later on tonight. No severe weather with this. However, you can see on future track that the spotty activity gets going and not expected to arrive until closer to nine o'clock. So be ready for a couple more drops of rain before things dry out late tonight. Then we get a bit of a break going into tomorrow tomorrow before more rain comes down the pipelines. So I'll let you know when the soggy stretch may finally end coming up with the forecast. All right, we're hoping it ends soon, Alex. Thanks for that. It was six tonight. The Roscoe man who died in a motorcycle crash earlier this month has been identified. The coroner's office has identified the man as 60 year old Carrie Dianita. It happened near Gleesman in Old River Roads at the beginning of the month. The coroner's office says Dianita died from injuries sustained in that crash. Police now say a teenager who was hurt in a crash involving an alleged drunk driver has died. That crash happening last week near Avon and West State Streets. Police say the car being drove by Jerisha Goodwin was hit by a man allegedly driving drunk. Goodwin was pronounced dead on the scene. A five month old child was also seriously hurt in the crash. The other driver involved, Juan Ager, faces multiple charges. Tonight at 6, it's grain bin safety season, and we got an inside look at a new tool to rescue trapped farmers. This is the Duran Fire Department's newest equipment. Grain can act a lot like quicksand, and sometimes farmers can get trapped in it, even suffocating. But this tool here allows firefighters to use panels to lift people out of the grain bin. The Duran FFA and Fire Department got the idea to buy one from a movie called Silo about a grain bin rescue. We watched this video and we just decided that we, there was this equipment in the area, but not in Durand. 
Um, so we fundraised to get this here in Durand. So if there was a need, it was extremely close. Thankfully, though, Duran Fire hasn't had to use this equipment yet. But with training in, firefighters are ready to respond.